if you weren't being asked to social distance yourself right now, if you could just get in your car and go anywhere, if everything that is now closed was open, if you didn't have to worry about infecting yourself or others, where would you go? What road would you take? So when it comes to finding the right roads in life, I have to tell you, <laughs> I'm just not the best. I'm what you call directionally challenged. And this was made clear to me years ago when I lived in rural Minnesota where the roads were not well marked. And, and people gave directions like this. Well, you're gonna take Highway 35 north until the road turns east around the slough at the edge of the Franklin property. As it starts going north again, go for about a mile and then turn west at the junction where Murphy's Grain Elevator used to be. Like, what? There are so many reasons why I would never in my life be able to follow those directions. The first being, which way's north? I, there's not a compass in my car. How am I supposed to figure that out? So here's my experience. If you know where you are going, if the roads are familiar, if the conditions are good, if your GPS is working, if you are on time, well, the roads that you travel in life can actually be quite enjoyable. However, if you are on an unfamiliar road, if the conditions are not the best, if your GPS is not working, if you're on a deadline and cannot find where you need to go, well then let me tell you, the roads that you take in life can be really stressful and an unpleasant experience. So this week I was invited into a family's life to work with them on, on a funeral. A loved one of theirs had died and I was able to get to the cemetery early as I was meeting them there. And I was able to watch as this hearse pulls into the cemetery, followed by all of these other cars, the immediate family. Now, distance-wise, this was a really short drive from the funeral home. But emotionally, for those who were grieving, I know that was one of the longest roads that that family has ever been on and actually will continue to be on. So let me ask you this, what road are you on right now? Are you enjoying it? The road is the setting for where the gospel story that we heard today takes place. Now here's what you need to know about this Easter story that Luke tells us today. Two unknown individuals, one named, the other not, are traveling down a road to a city or a town called Emmaus. Who are these two and why are they going to this place? Well, no one knows. What is known is that these two are in the midst of dealing with tragedy. The road they are traveling is a sad road paved with disappointment, despair, and anger. Just a few days ago, they lost someone very meaningful to them. They were followers of this man. They looked up to him. They admired him, they were friends with him, and they had hoped that their lives would be better because of him. It's not hard to imagine the disappointment, the grief, the despair, and the feelings of futility they must have felt as this loved one of theirs died. I don't think words can describe such a thing. I think such an event can only be understood through experience. So heartbroken, this unknown and unnamed individual set off for a relatively unknown city or town. Were they going home? 
Were they trying to get on with their lives? Or were they just trying to avoid the pain that they were feeling by going someplace new, distancing themselves from all that had just happened? Again, we don't know, which I think is a good thing. The ambiguity of this whole story, the unknown characters on an unknown road going to an unknown city for unknown reasons, has led many, including Frederick Buchner, to interpret the road to Emmaus in this way. Emmaus is the place we go in order to escape. A bar, a movie, wherever it is that we throw up our hands and say, enough. Emmaus may be buying a new suit or a new car or smoking more cigarettes than you really want, or reading a second-rate novel or even writing one. Emmaus may be going to church on Sunday. Emmaus is whatever we do or wherever we go to make ourselves forget that the world holds nothing sacred, that even the wisest and bravest and loveliest decay and die, that even the noblest ideas that, that people have had, ideas about love and freedom and justice, have always in time been twisted out of shape for, by selfish people for selfish ends. of this story is that the road to Emmaus is a road that we all travel from time to time. Whenever we feel lost and lonely, whenever we feel that we're faced with the unknown, whenever we feel like life has thrown us too much for us to handle, we are on the road to Emmaus. Whenever our fears become real and we have a sense of doubt and a hopelessness, we are on the road to Emmaus. Whenever we have to say goodbye to a loved one, we are on the road to Emmaus. Now, if this were the end of the story, it would be just an awful story, a sad and depressing story. If the story ended with the unknown and unnamed individual alone on the road, there would not be much hope. However, that's not how the story ends. On this road, these two meet another person. And through their conversation, through listening and, and sharing, they come to realize that this person is the one whom they thought was gone. Through this encounter, they realize that Jesus, the one in whom they put their trust, was, was still with them. It was Jesus who had walked with them for miles along this lonely and depressing road to Emmaus. It was Jesus who found them on the road to give them comfort and hope and assurance. Now, I believe this is still the same for us today. Whenever we find ourselves walking or <laughs> driving, maybe, down the road paved with heartache and sorrow, that lonely road that leads to Emmaus, we can be assured, like the unknown and unnamed individual, that Jesus is there, that Christ walks with us. Now, don't misunderstand what I am saying. I'm not saying that our faith should make us feel happy in all experiences that we have. The suffering and the pain that individuals experience on a, on a daily basis, they need to be acknowledged and, and they need to be named. However, what I am saying is this, that in this time of life, down the many roads that we all will travel, some really good, some, well, not so good, that Christ will meet us there. And although we cannot avoid the tragedies in life, you can't wish a pandemic away after all, you just can't. We can though, rest assured, that God cares and that God walks beside us. Easter is a celebration where we rejoice in God's love for us and the fact that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ. 
as people of faith, the Easter story is our source of hope. It's a source of comfort. You are not alone, for Jesus has risen and walks beside you, drives beside you down the many roads in life. Amen.